my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Stand great things he has done. Great things he has done. Great things he has done. Great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Bless him. Has done great things, he has done great things. Hallelujah, he has done great things. Hallelujah, he has done great things. Shall we have standing, please? Shall we stand to our feet? Begin to pray and thank God. Begin to bless His name. Begin to appreciate God for His goodness and His kindness to you. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we bless your name. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you. We give you praise. Thank you, O God, for your goodness, O God, to us. Thank you, O oh God, for your mercies and your compassion that has brought us this far in the name of Jesus. This morning, we appreciate you, O oh God, for your kindness. We give you praise, O oh God, for your goodness. We give you praise, O oh God, for your mercies. We bless your name, O oh Father, for you are good, O oh God, to us. We thank you, Ebenezer, for this far that you have brought us, O oh God. We appreciate your name, Papa, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our lives, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for our families, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for our spouses, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for our children, O oh God. We bless you, O oh God, for your kindness to us. In the name of Jesus, thank you, O oh God, for family. Thank you for friends, loved ones, O oh God. Thank you for enemies, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we are grateful to you, O God, this morning. In the name of Jesus, for your kindness. Somebody lift up your voice and pray and give God thanks in the name of Jesus. Oh, my soul, bless the name of the Lord. We bless you, O God, this morning for your kindness and your goodness and your grace. Thank you for your church, O God. Thank you for your people, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, O God, for Ghana, for this nation, O God. We appreciate you, O God. Through it all, you have been with us. Through it all, you have kept us, O God. We bless your name, O God. Shana la baka sede de ba, le kada ya sede le bra, yantali ni kasi ni yantala ba. We bless you, O God. We give you praise, O God. We give you praise, O God. We give you praise, O God. Sili braka sudi branta ya le katala bo shada dama ye le kasiri antala ba li karana brasa na. Thank you for your mercies, O God. Thank you for your compassion, O God. Thank you that you have dealt with us, O God, not according to our sins and our transgressions and our iniquities and our disobedience, but according to your loving kindness and tender mercy. This morning we bless you, O God. We appreciate you, God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, he has done great things. He has done great things.
and the weak into God's hands. We are completing our fasting prayer this week. We are praying that the Lord's hand will come upon us. The Lord will bless us. The Lord will deliver us. Lift up your voice and pray. And commit today and the week into God's hands. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray, committing today into your hands. Let your presence fill this place. Ah, come into our meeting this morning. In the name of Jesus, be present throughout the week, oh God. We pray that your people will be blessed, oh God. Because we came, because we prayed. In the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, we pray, Lord, we'll be blessed today because we came in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Spirit of God, thank you for your presence. Spirit divine, thank you for your presence. In the name of Jesus, come have your way in our meeting, oh God. Today and throughout the week, oh God. Come have your way. Come have your way. Shabalala sidi brantala daba. Lika sidi di broski daba. Lika lalaba shatalabra. We bless you this morning, oh God. We give you praise. We are not your name. We are to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Come on, come on. Lift up some words of worship. Bless his name. Bless his name. We bless your name, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hey, Araba Shodagabadaba. Yaro Kapa Yadaba Shaba. Come on, come on, come on. Lift up his name. Lift up his name. Lift up his name. Arabo Shahe. We bless your name this morning, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all adoration. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hey. If it wasn't for your love, Lord, if it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your mercy, Lord, where would we have been? Hey, Katusha We bless your name, Lord, we bless your name, we bless your name. Oh God, we bless your name. Iare Shuragana Bashaya Brandaha. Ayadadadada Bashare Gere Bayoda Badeha. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Lift it up, lift it up, come on, come on, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Hey, we bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, we bless your name, Lord. We give you all the praise. Are Katosha Yabranda. Bless Yare Katosha. He reigns in power and love. Let it bow down and worship. And he is so dead. <laughs> we look to Yahweh. Yahweh. I hope it's Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. <laughs> Forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh.
of the Lord this morning once again. If you came to church with your Bible, please lift it up as we do our song. third week of our prayer and fasting, and I trust that whether you've been here or at home, you are actively participating. I pray that if you haven't done it, this is the last week, I want to encourage you that you take interest and pray. Prayer is the solution. Amen. This morning we are blessed to have 
one of our father's sons to minister to us is the person of Reverend Evans Fosu Akumenin. Let's welcome him with a clap offering as he mounts the pulpit. God bless you. You are welcome. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are grateful to God for this wonderful morning. I bring you greetings from the very throne of God. And I believe that this morning, your life will never be the same. Amen. We all are aware of our prayer and fasting month that we've been doing for the past 22 or 3 years and um, we haven't at any point in time stopped but this year COVID wanted nearly to stop it by the leadership of Reverend Tony Amwakohine he said no way whether COVID or no COVID, we will still have our prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. I guess he deserves a big clap as he, we have a visionary leader who always makes sure that we stay to the core duty of the church. Uh, it tells you that we are really, really in safe hands. Amen. I want to thank God for his life. The Lord over the years has used him to mold and shape many of us. I tell people that for over 2017 years that I have been under this man of God, I can testify that my life has really shaping up. Amen? I don't know about you. I'm very sure that the Lord has used him to really shape in your life. So we celebrate your life, Daddy for all the toils and all the sacrifices you have made. And uh, we celebrate you for that. Amen. This week, I want you to join me as I lead you to pray and to make confessions and to repent of certain things that we have done that probably God is not pleased with. And when we are going to really render our hearts and get rid of certain things, then we'll call upon God and God will hear us and heal us and heal our land. Hallelujah. So basically this week from today up to, up to Tuesday, I believe, when I will end with you and my brother will also continue, I want to focus on how we can really come to a place of repentance. There are so many things going on around us today pointing to the fact that the world is about to come to an end. And we as a church, we need to be prepared. We as individuals, we need to be ready that any time that the trumpet is sound, we will be in the position to be raptured. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want to concentrate on our self-examination. How do we examine ourselves in a manner that we will be ready to accept certain things that are not right with us and allow the Holy Spirit to really show us and to mold us and to help us to do that which is expected of us. Tomorrow, I'll be looking at family life, how we examine our family life in a manner that it will be in accordance with the word of God. Then on Tuesday, we will examine the issues pertaining our nation and our world at large. So many things are happening. So many things are going on predicting or forecasting that very soon 
our Lord Jesus will appear and we need to be ready. Hallelujah. I want us to bow down our heads as we pray and we commit this short time to the hands of the Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask that you have your way. We believe that, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. We ask in the name of Jesus that today you throw your satellite on us. Let every area of our lives that are not surrendered to you yet be surrendered to you at the end of the day, at the end of this preaching, in the mighty name of Jesus. That indeed you be our Lord and our Master. We want to thank you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to give a big clap unto Jesus this morning. I want to feel your presence this morning. I want to really feel your presence this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, if we are alive today, then it means that the grace of God has indeed found us. I was telling somebody that we can only count on the supernatural life support, which is the grace of God. For people who have and can afford certain things in life, today we look for them and we cannot find them. You and I may not be so privileged to have certain things, and yet the grace of God has sustained us up to this point. Amen? So we have every cause to thank him and to praise him. And we know that the Lord, by his grace, will continue to keep us through this COVID experience. Hallelujah. Nobody will fall victim to this COVID. You didn't say amen to that. Nobody will die. Nobody will contract. All of us will be kept safe and sound by the grace of God. I believe so much that he is going to do that for us. Amen? This morning, because of time, I will quickly want us to look at a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 to 10. Something is there that I will want us to look at. Right. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you, not, do, do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? But, trust, but I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Verse 7. Now I pray to God that you do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable, true, though we may seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Verse 9. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. And this also we pray that you may be made complete. Verse 10, the last verse. Therefore, I write these things being absent, least being present as you use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for the edification and not for destruction. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to speak briefly and then we will enter into a time of prayer. I have captioned it self-examination. Somebody say self-examination. I want to hear you say self-examination. Say, say it one more time. Self-examination. I believe that in this world and in, in, in our life, self-examination is normal with everyday life. For you to be able to climb the academic ladder, you must be sure that you got to be examined. There is no way you can climb the academic ladder 
and you will not be examined. That is the normal truth concerning life. For those of us that are drivers here, if you really want to be a driver, you have to go to the DVLA and they will examine you. You probably might have been taught by someone on the football field how to drive. But for you to receive the authority and the right to drive around, you must go and they will examine you. In every aspect of our lives, examination is key for you to be approved. In the same way, in our walk with God, we got to be examined. There's no way you cannot be approved by God if you do not examine yourself. So this point in time in the life of the church of Corinthians, Paul writing to them and he's instructing them that you must examine yourself. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe Paul was writing to these believers in Corinth and we ask ourselves that why should Paul write this letter to these people? Knowing the fact that these are Christians, these are believers. The purpose of this examination is to bring them to a place where all of them will accept the fact that unless God approves of you, there's no way you can, you can make it to heaven. So self-examination is very key in our work with God. If we do not examine ourselves, we might be deceiving ourselves, thinking that we are right with God and yet we are not right with God. So say, examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. So the first thing I want to ask you all and ask myself is that, am I really solid in the faith? Turn to somebody and ask the person, are you solid in the faith? You might not understand why I am bringing this to the fore this morning. There's likelihood for you to be in the church and think that you are going to heaven. There are so many people today who by virtue of association with a particular church make them believe that they are going to heaven. But I want you to know that until you come to a place where you self-examine yourself in the light of the word of God, you might be trodden on a very dangerous ground. So Paul is asking them to self-examine themselves. Are you really solid in the faith? When it mattered most for you to really prove that you are a child of God, would you stand for all the persecutions and the trials that you go through? Would you be able to stand? There are things that are going on around us today that people are making compromises. Thinking that nobody is there. My pastor is not there. My church leader is not there. I can do whatever I want to do and I'll go scot-free. I want to remind you that nobody knows when Jesus will come. That is why we have to always be ready so that when he comes, he'll be able to take us all. Amen? Are you really solid in the faith? The key things that Paul mentioned in verse 5 and verse 6, which I want to draw your attention to. He said, examine. He uses the word examine. When we say examine, what do we imply? What are we trying to say? Examination has to do with looking for specific proof. You go to the hospital and they conduct examination on you. They will ask for their lab reports. 
they want to diagnose your sickness or the disease that is worrying you. All they are looking for is a proof of the situation you find yourself in. And when the doctor is able to diagnose and get all the necessary indications, then the doc doctor will be able to prescribe for you and your sickness will be handled. There's another word he uses there which says that you have to test yourself. And testing has to do with an objective evaluation of an issue. An objective evaluation of an issue. There come to a time in our lives that we've got to be objective. The way we assess ourselves in the light of God's word. Do you see certain things going on around you and you realize that this thing does not go in line with God's word? There are so many people sometimes they think that I can do certain things and I'll go scot free. But in the light of God's word, if you are going to be objective, you realize that this does not go in accordance with the word of God. There's also an issue of recognition. We have to recognize, and that has to do with self-awareness. There's so many things we have to really look out for and be ready to ask ourselves that if God should come at this point in time in my life, what am I going to report to him? How am I going to account for my life? All of this is something that we need to always consciously take the pain to examine ourselves. Friends, it is important we examine ourselves in the light of God's word. The people who think that I can do this, I can do that. And there's nothing wrong with it. The fact that everybody is doing it does not make it right. We are living in a time that today, a lot of young people who are in relationship, they think that it is normal to be sleeping around. But I want you to know that the word of God is still against it. The fact that people are doing does not make it right. And if you Jesus to come today, are you very sure that you can make it to heaven? Let us not deceive ourselves. The book of Galatians says that whatever you sow, you shall reap it. Do not deceive yourself. For God can never be mocked. We need to understand that we serve a God who is very, very interested in our lives. Socrates said that the unexamined life is not worth living. And I think I agree with him. Unexamined life is not worth living. Day after day, you must examine yourself. You must really come to a place and ask God that these actions of mine, does it please you? The way you handle people, the way you talk to people, does it really, really please God? We have to ask ourselves those questions. People lying about people. People gossiping about people. People doing all manner of people. Keeping grudges here and there. All of these are something that the word of God is not pleased with. Or God is not pleased with. We have to always examine ourselves in the light of that. So in this time of prayer and fasting, 
Yes, it is good we claim all the prophecies. It is good we destroy the works of the devil. It is good we do this, we do that. But at the end of the day, our relationship with God is the most important thing. Hello? What did I say? Our relationship with God is the most important thing. Whatever you do that does not please God, it breaks the fellowship that you have with God. You are unable to go to God and relate with him anymore. So it's important we are right with God any point in time so that our prayers will always go to him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this morning, it's all about self-examination. Examine yourself in the light of God's word. How are you faring when it comes to the word of God? Whatever you are doing, it is God who is asking you to do, and God expects you to do the right thing. So we are looking at God helping us to be able to come to a place where we will accept the fact that things are not right with me. You accept it, you admit it, and you confess and you believe that God has forgiven you. Accept, confess, and believe. It's very important. There's nothing that we can do in this world that we think that we make success of. If God's hand is not in it, if God does not approve of it, the world will applaud you. But if God does not applaud of that, my friend, you are wasting your time. You can receive applause from man. But if God disapproves of you, you are nothing. That is why we always have to come to him and ask him, am I right with you? When David sinned against God and, and the prophet Nathan went to him and, and, and told him about what he has done. David said in Psalm 51, Said, so take not your Holy Spirit from me. If you take your Holy Spirit from me, I am nothing. I need you. David did not argue with the prophet. David did not say that because I'm a king, you dare not come to me and tell me this. He accepted. He agreed. And he went to God that he should, he should forgive him of all that he has done. Friends, let us not sit in the church and deceive ourselves. There are certain things that are in our lives that God is not pleased with. So this time of prayer and fasting, let us not wish them away. Let us be open and let us come with a rendered heart and tell God that I am wrong in this area. I need your help in this area. Somebody say amen to that. Agree with God. Agree with him. For if you don't agree with him, the day will come and you'll be left out. You can be sure that it's not about your status. God will not say that because you are the president of this nation, I will allow you to come in. No way. No way. The things that are going on around us are all indicating that soon and very soon Jesus will come. And are we ready for his coming? Tomorrow and Tuesday, we shall be looking more detail into that and we'll pray. Because of time, I just want you to reflect on your life as an individual. Don't let church deceive you. Christianity is about relationship with God. Making sure that you build a very solid foundation. And it doesn't matter what happens you will still stand strong in the faith. You will still go on. Whether you have money or you don't have money. Whether you have lost your job or you don't have a job. Whether you are married or you are not married. Whether you have a child or you don't have a child. Whatever the situation you find yourself, that will not deter you from following or pursuing the things of God. You will still love God. Paul said, 
What shall separate us from the love of God? Is it persecution? Is it trial? Is it what? No powers of heaven can separate us from the love of God. Let us be determined to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. And if we can determine to follow Jesus, that we must come to a place where we self-examine ourselves and be ready to follow him. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want to lead you, all of us, to go to God. I know that there are places that I have fallen short. There are so many areas of my life that the Holy Spirit has thrown a light on that I've seen that I have fallen short. And I'm going to ask him to help me to overcome it this morning. Amen? We want to ask the Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for being prideful and deceiving ourselves. God, forgive me for being prideful. The small education I have, I think I know it all. Forgive me. Forgive me. These days people are saying that, oh, I am a career woman. I am this. I am a professor. I am this. So we make those things that the world, uh, the world sees as the main thing become something that we pride ourselves in. But we have to come to a place where we ask God that please forgive us for being prideful and deceiving ourselves. We want to ask the Lord that he will forgive us for being so quick to rush into sin. We are so quick in rushing into sin. We have no break. When it comes to getting into sin, there's no break. We break a fairly. Let me be serious with our lives. We are so quick in rushing to sin. We hold phones and we are lying. Meanwhile, you are at Pancrono somewhere. We think that it is normal to lie. You are so quick in rushing into sin. Oh, do I have a witness here? Hallelujah. We have to come to a place that we ask God that please forgive us. For some of these things, I beg to tell you that on that day, if you don't repent on that day, you have a shock of your life. So we want to ask the Lord that you will help us. That we will be able to come to a place where we will turn away. Listen to this. We are going to ask the Lord that he will forgive us for spending more time watching TV, texting, tweeting, and talking on phone more than praying and reading your word. Do you agree with me? I said, how you doing? Be saying, hello. Preaching, I know we need you. We are going to ask God. Many of us, we can stay on Facebook for hours, hours. But I ask you, the whole of the week, have you been able to read even one verse? And you think God is pleased with that? God is not pleased with that. You haven't been able to even pray for five minutes. All your prayers you do is only in church. So God is not happy with that. So we are going to go to him and ask him to forgive us. Hallelujah. We are also going to ask him to forgive us. For lying, for gossiping, and for holding grudges against our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Hallelujah. Lying and gossip in the church. Hey. Lying and gossiping is the order of the day in the church. You haven't seen it, but you claim to have the latest news. The facts about the issue. God sees it all. God is not happy about it. Self-examination. He said, examine yourself to see 
whether you are still in the faith. He was talking to Christians. He was talking to believers. But why is he saying that? Examine yourself to see whether you are still in the faith. He wasn't writing to the ordinary people, but he was writing to the Christians. We got to examine ourselves. We asked in the Lord that he will help us. That we will be able to come to a place where we will know that we need his help. What I'm trying to say this morning is that in conclusion is that Jesus said, they will come to me and say, Lord, we use your name in casting out demons. We use your name to do miracles. We use your name to do this, do that. But he said, I will tell them, go away from me for you workers of iniquities. May it not be your portion in Jesus' name. He didn't say me to that. May it not be your portion in Jesus' name. That any time Jesus come, we will go to him and he will receive us. And what would Jesus tell us? Oh, talk to me. What would Jesus tell us? Good and what? Faithful servant. That is the recommendation I need from Jesus. I do not want to hear Jesus telling me that go away from me. You have planted churches. You have done this. But go away from me. Oh, that day will be terrible for me. But I pray that the Lord will help me. You have the opportunity to amend your ways this morning. You have the opportunity to tell God that please help me to overcome these areas of my life. And the Lord will help us. Amen. Hallelujah. There's this video I saw which I want to show in just five minutes. And just to be a takeaway for all of us. Friends, there are every indication that Jesus is coming. Scientists have really found out. In 204, we heard about a Bobia Eba. I don't know if we still remember it. 204, the NASA, they discovered that there is this asteroid, a big stone, that is about to hit the Earth. And when it hits the Earth, over 75% of the world population will all be wiped out. They said it. And this video we are going to show in just about five minutes. A man of God in the U.S. called Tom Horn, Thomas Horn, had a revelation. This man of God had a revelation about the resignation of uh, the former Pope, uh, Benedict, in 2012. And indeed, it came to pass. And this same man has had this deep revelation that there is going to be a time that this big rock will come and hit the whole world. Confirming what the scientists have already seen. Friends, it is all telling us that we must be ready. According to the man, he said it's going to happen in 2029. That is what the man is saying. But whether 2029 or 2025, or 2021, or 2030, whatever. The point I want us to take away from here today is that, are you ready when Jesus comes? Please, if you can show us the video, you can play for us the video. In just about five minutes, we'll watch it and we'll pray. Uh, so approximately one year ago now, I went to bed, same scenario, 2 a.m. in the morning, and all of a sudden, I woke up into this panoramic, um, what, almost like a film that's playing out in front of me, and I'm in the middle of it. And what I first thought I was looking at was a giant fiery dragon uh, deep up in space, moving, undulating like a serpent, racing towards the earth. Then suddenly my point of view changed, and now I was up above the object, and I could see that it was not a fiery dragon, but rather it was a giant space rock, an asteroid. And the way it was turning as it was moving through the space in the light of the sun, was glistening off of the, uh, the, you know, the, the elements of the stone, it only gave it the appearance that it was moving back and forth. Now, all of a sudden, I'm back on earth again. And now, I am surrounded by literally tens of thousands of people, and we are on a mountain. Uh, and we are running for our lives, and people everywhere are screaming and begging God 
to deliver them from what is coming. And I turn and I look over my shoulder and I can see this fiery mountain, basically, this giant rock entering into the atmosphere, burning as it comes through the atmosphere, breaking apart as it comes through the atmosphere. A huge part of it strikes the ocean, a huge part of it strikes the earth. And, the, and all of a sudden, the earth is shaking so violently that none of us can stand up. We're all knocked off of our feet. Uh, it was the most horrific thing. I can hear this terrible sound as if the earth is literally cracking, like the mantle of the earth is breaking apart. And now I'm looking back over my shoulder again in this giant wall of water, just an enormous tsunami, hundreds of feet tall, coming up over the top of this mountain. And again, everybody's trying to run. Then these, what felt like, large hands come down underneath my arms and lift me up into space, and now I'm looking down upon the earth. And here's an important part about this entire thing. I'm not a scientist. I don't know what would happen if an asteroid of that size were to impact the earth. But what I saw, I later found to be exactly how scientists describe what would transpire. With the waters boiling beneath this giant burning rock, the aerosol coming up off of that, entering into the upper atmosphere, setting in motion hurricane activity, the second part hitting the earth, causing a volcano to begin erupting. So what, you, the saw, atmosphere. what yes. you saw is what would actually happen, but you didn't have the knowledge no, I didn't. of what would actually happen from a scientific viewpoint, but you still saw it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and to use street lingo, it freaked me out. Well, when you I also, started doing the research, it really freaked uh, me out. But I'll tell you the thing that strikes me even stronger. Uh, you heard a name. Yeah. What was the name? So, so as this is playing out, I'm terrified. All of a sudden, I wake up and said, I almost fell out of bed on my face. I mean, I had cold chills all over me. I'd never seen anything this vivid or terrifying. I start writing it down, but then all of a sudden, it was as if a voice. I don't know if this was just in my head or if it was an audible sound in the room, but it was as if a voice spoke and it said one word, apophis. Now, did you know what Apophis meant? I knew this. I knew that there was an ancient Egyptian god I didn't of even, darkness. I didn't even know that. Of chaos. Well, because I've studied mythology, but okay. I didn't really know a lot about it. Isn't it interesting? At first you That's thought what it I was thought a I dragon. Saw. That's exactly what I thought I saw. Now, the other thing I knew, and I, and I hardly knew anything about this, was I knew that NASA had discovered an asteroid in 2004 that they named Apophis. And that was basically all I knew about it. So because what I saw was literally a space rock, when I got out of bed, I immediately went and started doing research. One thing led to the other uh, and uh, learned that this asteroid at first was on NASA's radar as being an NEO, a near Earth object uh, that they believed it uh, in 2004 had the potential to impact the Earth. They still believe it's possible. Okay, now, th this Apophis, this, this interests me. Why do you believe Apophis is from the ancient prophecy about Wormwood in the book of Revelation? Well, first of all, I believe in prophecy. I believe in Bible prophecy. I believe this event is going to happen. I did not know that when Revelation 8 was written, where it says a star fell from heaven, yes. it's the word aster. Astron is from the which Greek. you make asteroid. Yeah, I didn't know that until then. And it was a lot of other things that I learned along the way as well. Uh, and the bottom line is Apophis is a real asteroid. And here's what they're saying. They're saying it probably isn't going to strike the Earth in 2029, so they changed their opinion a little bit. It still could, they're saying. But here's what they're saying. But it's going to come so close to the Earth that it's going to knock the satellites out that are in orbit around this planet. Now, this is a monster rock, and I talked to several astronomers, including a friend of mine that works at NASA and has above top secret security clearance, and plus Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis that works at the Pentagon, put me in contact with impact specialists, all these scientists, and they said there is no way in the world that you can say that a stone moving 28,000 miles per hour through space that's going to cover tens of thousands of miles before it gets here in nine years is going to come so close that it's going to knock out the satellites and yet be assured that it's not going to hit the planet. They all said that's rubbish, it's a cover-up. Here's what I believe. 
I believe it because I saw it. I believe it because what I saw and the way it came to me has not yet one time in my life failed, including the re resignation of Pope Benedict against mm -hmm. all odds. It has not happened one time yet that it didn't unfold exactly the way I saw it. So I'm, t I'm speaking from personal experience, but it's been validated by the facts after the fact. Uh, so I believe it in all my heart. I, I will look you in the eye and, and give you a new prediction like I did when I told you the Pope was going to resign and everybody said it would never happen. In April of 2029, Apophis is going to strike the earth. be revealed to you in this short time of my presentation. But I want us to come to a place where we are real with God. Sometimes we are not real with God. Sometimes it's like we trying to play with God. Sometimes it's like we try to outsmart God. Sometimes we're trying to outspace God. But I want you to know that there's nothing that you can do that God is not aware. So you stand before God and God is scanning your life. What is it that he's going to find? What is the report that God is going to, to get out of the scanning of your life? So just come to a place where you are real with God and ask him that I need your help. I do not want to play church. I do not want to just come and let people know that I am I am also here. But you are coming here knowing that God has a day of accountability for all of us. Friends, there is a day of accountability. A day that we shall all appear before the judgment seats of God. And God said that we are going to give an account of our lives. Whatever we did our lives. Whether good or bad, we are going to give an account of that. So let's come to him and ask him, the Lord, I have failed in this area. I am not doing well in this area. There's more room for improvement in this area of my life. And I want you to help me come out of this area. If you are going to be true with God, God will have mercy on you and make an amends in your life and bless your life. Friends, let us not go through this prayer and fasting as ritual. It's never the intention of our senior pastor of this church to make this prayer time a ritualistic meeting, a ritualistic time. It's a time that we have an encounter with our God. It's a time that we have an encounter with our maker. That any area of our lives that are not pleasing to him, he will come through to us and he will separate things for us. Let's come to God with that attitude of Lord, I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. I want you to join me as I sing this song. Soon, soon, crumb, crumb. Yeah, yeah, whoa. you are wanted to join in oh so so grow grow yeah yeah oh ana be shao mama yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh personal right this song personal this song
on the screen 1 Corinthians chapter 12 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 21 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 21 let's read it shortly as we enter into a time of prayer shortly the Bible says that and the I no, forgive me 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 21 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 21 said so, least when I come again my God will humble me among you and I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of their uncleanness fornication and lewdness which they have predicted there are several things that we find ourselves in that we have not repented of it but this morning there's an opportunity for you to go to God and repent of it hallelujah amen I am not here to make you feel guilty I am not here to make you feel that you are unwanted child of God I'm only here to point out to you that you must be able to examine yourself and be right with God. This morning, we want to go to him and ask him, the Lord, I ask you to help me. I ask you to help me. Let's go to God this morning in every area of your life that things are not right with you. Don't stand there and think that you are okay. Never think that you are okay. Never think that you are okay. You, are okay. you need the help of God. You need the help of God. You need the help of God. Just be real with God. Just be true with God. Just be true with God. And tell you the Lord, I need you in this area. I need you in this area. Lord Jesus, somebody talk to God. 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 Every area of your life that is not surrounded unto God, talk to Him and ask for forgiveness and repent of it. And repent of it. And repent of it. And repent of it. God is pleasing. God is cleaning this out. 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 Let's come to Him. Let's come to Him. Let's come to Him. Let's come to him. And ask Him to help us. Lord, I ask Him to help me, Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of the Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of time, we will just make sure that we will be done with it and go from here. But I want us to pray shortly that God forgive me of my pride. Friends, there are many things that in the face of God, we are being prideful. We want to go to him that God forgive us. The way you sometimes behave in your home, you behave towards your wife, you behave towards your husband, you behave towards your colleagues. It is full of pride. It's full of pride. God wants you to just go to him and ask him to forgive you. There are areas like sometimes we are so quick in rushing to sin. We are so, so quick in rushing to sin. We want to ask the Lord that help us. Because of time, we are putting all this prayer topic together and we'll pray. And the last thing I want us to look at is that we spend more time in watching TV, texting, Facebook, tweeting, and talking on phone more than prayer and the reading of the word of God. Let's go to him and ask him to help us and repent of that attitude. Right now, somebody begin to pray. Somebody begin to pray. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Father, areas of my life that are being pride, the pride of life, the pride of life, the pride of life. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I repent of my pride, oh God. I repent of my pride. My pride towards my colleagues. My pride towards 
Because of time, we will do the last prayer and I'll ask the MC to come. We want to pray and ask the Lord that forgive me for lying. Friends, don't take it as normal. The Bible says in Revelation that all witchcraft and liars and fornicators will be cast into the lake of fire. Don't think that you are lying and we have white lies and black lies and green lies. All lie be lie. All lie be lie. He said, we want to repent of our lies. We are not truthful to each other. We always want to ask smart people. We want to ask the Lord that forgive me of my lies. We are gossiping about people. We are slandering people. We are killing people literally. We are asking God that forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us. We want to ask the Lord that any grudge that I hold with anybody, it can be your wife, it can be your child, it can be your colleague, any grudge, any bitterness, whatever you are holding against somebody, you are asked by the word of God that you have to repent of that. So I want to go to God and please help me. Let's pray this last prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Get me real with God. Get me truthful to God. Get me truthful to God. Any grudge that you are holding with somebody, repent of it. Repent of it. Repent of it. Repent of it. I repent of any grudge. I repent of any grudge. Anything that I'm holding. Any bitterness. Any bitterness. Any bitterness. Any unforgiveness. Any unforgiveness. I repent. I repent of it. I repent of it. Lord help me. 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 In the name of Jesus. My God. Oh Lord. I come to you just as I am. Just as I am I have come. Just as I am I have come. Just as I am I have come. Please help me. God bless you. Amen. Friends, God is doing something in our lives. It is the intention of the devil that he will keep you in that state so that you will miss the rapture. But I believe that the Spirit of God wants me to bring these issues out this week that as we come to him we'll just be real with him father I want to thank you this morning for this opportunity you have given us to confess and make amends we know the lord it is your very purpose that we will be right with you that christ Will be formed in us somebody said that in every day of our lives we either become more like christ or we become less like christ mm. are you becoming more like christ or less like christ father help us Jesus. help us help us that we will not miss that day we want to thank you we bless your name in jesus name amen Amen. Somebody give a big clap on to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for your time. I ask the MC to take over from here. Thank you. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Amen. This is a very a good word on time for us as we prepare ourselves and get ourselves ready. I'm saying that the relevance of your existence on this earth is to pursue the agenda of heaven. I pray that as we go through these times, the Lord is preparing us for something good. Let's please be on our feet as we bring our offering. We bring our offering unto the Lord. Shall we please be on our feet? And I also want to remind you, this is the white group. I want to encourage you from tomorrow, the red, which is the third group, will join and will have a good time in the presence of the Lord. Your love is kind. Your love is patient. give a score, I'll give the white church maybe 98.5 percent. Hallelujah. Your attendance is the best. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Your attendance is the best. I've never seen the hundred church being filled Apart from the day we had a wedding and some visitors came to join us. This is the best service we've had so far. Put your hands together and give them. Wow. I'm so much excited. We continue with the prayer of fasting. So I expect you to be here tomorrow. We've noticed that because of work schedule, people are not able to come here for the prayer meetings. So, we're not going to ask the white church alone to come for this week. We're going to ask the red yeah. to join them from tomorrow. For this last week, normally, July prayer and fasting ends on the first Sunday of August. And that is exactly how it's going to be. The only difference is that it ends with appreciation, but this time it's not ending with appreciation. So our brother, student, uh, Pastor Daniel Boachi will take over from Wednesday 
and then he will end with us on Sunday like this. And then God willing, the following Sunday, uh, we we'll try to see if we can have two services with an hour interval. I want us to begin with, with. Oh, so you like that one, eh? I want, I want us to begin with, with the teachings about the end time. What Apostle showed us is something that uh, should uh, prop us up. I also saw it on the stage growth. And uh, that word which the Apostle is talking about is right in the book of Revelation. Nobody should tell you that we are getting closer to the end time. We, we are there. So, get yourself up. This is not a time for you to slack. Who? It is not a time for you to slack at all. This is the time for you to be a better Christian, to be on fire. This COVID is killing our spirit, if you don't know. Many of us are becoming lazy in coming to church. Meanwhile, we go to work, we go to the market, we go to the ball. But coming to church to pray has become very difficult for us. Some people say on oh, Sunday, but we are getting lazy gradually. It is killing our love for the Lord. This is the time you have to be hot for the Lord. Gather your children around you. Teach them the word of God. The end is near with us. Even if it is 2020, who knows he's going to live up to 2029? How many of us know what is going to happen to you tomorrow? So if the asphalt or whatever is going to fall on 2029, do you have to wait until 2029? So we hope to see you tomorrow. Wherever you are, hearing the sound of my voice, please get yourself involved in the prayer and fasting. Pray. It is not necessarily getting down from your car and kneeling down by the roadside. Let your heart be on its knees. Pray wherever you are. Worship the Lord. Sing good songs. Worship the Lord. Pray that God will help you and help your children, your wife and your husband. Two people will be sleeping together. One will be taken away. I pray that I will not be taken away and leave my wife. Amen. Both of us should be taken away. Amen. Yes. It should be your desire. It should be your desire that you don't leave your husband, you don't leave your wife. If you are not thinking about these things, then you are wrong. Something is wrong. May God help us. Amen. Amen. So hope to see you again tomorrow evening. Once again, I must be honest with you. I am very much encouraged with the wise service. Put your hands together again for the Lord. Yes, you've done very well. So let's be on our feet. We sing our last song. I think there's going to be a wedding, right? Yeah. What are, what are they? Please come. It's going to be a wedding. It's on the 1st of August. Right. So, uh, is it Harriet? Harriet and her something, something. They have decided to marry. So, according to Dr. Honorable Dr. Mafu, I could, they have decided to marry. So, please help them in your prayers. Get your passes ready. On the 1st of August, that is Saturday, they'll be here to tie the knot. And I think the time is 10, right? Right. So here they are. Please go and take your seat. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Odame is not here. He's in the States. But he's lost his brother. Yesterday was the barrier and the funeral. They did it together. And uh, normally, you know, it is your husband, your wife, a child, maybe father, mother. You don't extend to. But he has loved ones. I was there yesterday briefly because I had to attend another funeral in my hometown. So they are sitting today and I think that some loved ones must know so that they can also go and uh, console the family. All the children are there. 
is taking place at uh, North Centreso. If you know uh, Methodist Church, if you are coming from the market descending to Centreso, I think there's a second, the first turn after the Methodist Church on your right. First turn on your right, first turn on your left. Then you see the phone at the so you can just pass by, you know, and, uh, and I think Mrs. La too, Grace La has also lost a brother. The funeral took place yesterday. Where was it? Antwa. Ajura, okay. Ajura is far from here now. If, I, if you see we're going to Ajura from here now, it's very difficult, but maybe, you know, you understand? Okay. So get ready when she comes in. You see her around just a Pentecostal handshake. If you have gone, to, were to go to a jira, you pay not less than 200, you're going and coming. If you have a car, you have to fill it with fuel. So if you part 100 or 50 for her, you know, to uh, pay some of the kenke he bought for visitors, I think that would be very fine. Let's be on our feet, let's sing our last song and then we are out of here. Yes. I know that we are far behind time. Almost 30 minutes behind time. So go on. Holy words, Lord. No shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever for surely there is an end and my expectation for 2020 and beyond shall never be cut off in Jesus name amen God bless you have a fruitful week amen amen if today is your first time of worshiping with us, please, let's see you right here. Come up front here. I am who I and am meet because of you. Reverend Akumenyin. If today is your if first time, no please, for you, tell just me where walk would up from I here be? and meet Reverend Akumenyin. I was lost and sinking deep in sin. Reach out your hand and rescue me. No one else can do the things you do. Oh, oh, oh. no one else but you. I am who I am because of you. If it had not been for you. Really?
reach out your hand and rescue me. No one else can do the things you do. Oh, oh, oh. no one else but you. No one but no one. Lucha but no one. No one else but you. Moko moko bendy. Oh, oh, oh.